Last time, I told you about this. So the big scary goal that I've picked is to run a sub three marathon at 100 kilos body weight before I'm 40. And today I'm gonna to share with you how I'm gonna start the process of turning that dream into reality. But before we get into the details of these first few stages of the new plan, I thought I'd give you a quick update as to how this first week of the program is going. And suffice to say, it's going really, really well. I've thought what better way to celebrate getting into this new direction than to buy a new pair of running shoes. I've gone for a pair of Adidas Solar Boost 19s and so far so good, they feel really comfortable. In fact, I'd love to know, let me know down in the comments what you're running in at the moment. I've restarted the 30 day challenge. And if you don't know what the 30 day challenge is, just simply Google James Dunn 30 day challenge. It's a simple program which takes you through 30 days worth of strength conditioning exercises specifically made for us runners. Now, on top of that, I've also set about something which I wouldn't normally recommend for people, although I know it works for my body, is I am running every day in April. Now, that isn't to suddenly start racking up the mileage, all of a sudden doing lots of volume from a place where I was doing very little volume. It's actually all about, for me, building a habit. It's all about reframing my whole daily routine around running. So I move away from the question of, will I run today? Shall I run today? Do I feel like it? Into a place of, how do I run today? Where do I fit it in? I know I need to run today. I know I must run today. The question is, how can I make that happen? And that for me has proven so powerful in the past. It's why I usually default when I come back into a training program into doing a month worth of low volume, frequent daily runs. At the back end of that, usually I can feel my fitness has improved, as you would imagine, but also my mindset around running is way more resolved and I'm in such a better habit. So today is the 4th of April as I'm filming this and we're on day four and so far so good. The way I'm working it is I'm doing, I'm setting myself a minimum mileage I'm doing per day, literally of one mile. Okay, most days I'm obviously doing a lot more than that, but in, in alongside that one mile per day, I'm also challenging myself using the, um, just literally using the health uh, app on my phone to check my daily step counts. Even if I only do a mile's run that day, I'm also doing 15,000 steps. So 15,000 steps is my daily baseline. That's gonna be good for, again, just burning calories full stop. But really what I'm doing is I'm doing around about four miles, 6K per day, and then one day per week is slightly less, one day per week is slightly more. So earlier on this week, I did 10K as my slightly longer run. And again, next week, it's gonna be vastly those kind of regular, for me, there's a regular route I do, which is around about four miles, 6K. For the next few weeks, gonna be building on that. Again, as we get into this video, I'll tell you exactly how that works alongside the first phase of my plan. In fact, let's just get into this right now. The first part of my training plan beyond this initial running every day in April is going to be a massive base building period. Again, I had a fairly good aerobic base when I ran my 326 marathon in Rotterdam in 2018, but even then there was plenty of work to do. Right now, there is so much work to do in terms of base building. I'm giving myself an initial 20 week block to start making a real dent in that underlying aerobic fitness because it's that aerobic engine, the endurance that comes from that, that everything else is built on when it comes to marathon training. Now, how am I gonna do that? Well, it's basically what I'd refer to as a modified Maffetone training plan. Okay, it's not exactly a Maffetone training plan. I know a lot of you will be familiar with Phil Maffetone's work. It's not exactly that, but it's very, very similar too. And in my next video on this channel, I'm going to explain how I modify that, how I change that to suit me that's that little bit better. Now, I know that if I sit at around about six to eight hours, and on bigger weeks, maybe more like 10 hours of running at around about 135 beats per minute. So for me, very slow, very easy. If I can get in that volume over time, week after week after week after week, I'll start to see my fitness improving and the pace that I'm moving at, at that easy effort will get faster and faster and faster as those weeks go by. And in fact, if you follow me, if you follow me on Instagram, you may have already seen the benchmark test that I did earlier on this week. And again, if you haven't seen that, 
I'll link down in the description so you can go and see that exact post. But it really is going to be a case of test, retest, retest for me to monitor my progress. And I'm expecting to see that that progress should be fairly dramatic over the next 20 weeks, especially with a few tweaks that I'm making to help maintain a little bit of speed alongside all that easy running. I do think as good as Maffetone is, there is an argument to say that long, slow runs make long, slow runners. Um, but there are some things you can do to help yourself out with that a little bit. I'll get into that next week. Don't miss that video. That said, pace is pretty much irrelevant at this point. It's all about intensity level. For me, all about heart rate and just keeping a lid on that effort level. If I can keep it all nice and easy, I'll be working in the right training zones, working the right energy systems, i.e. The, the aerobic system, because that's what I'm trying to develop. Like I said a second ago, that is what marathon performance is built upon. The speed work is the cherry on top. And right now, as I'm coming back from being really sporadic with my training, my body can't handle a load of speed work, even if I wanted to do it. So this will allow me over time to build a little bit of resilience, build a little bit more of that run specific strength as well. Yes, there's loads we can do in the studio here, loads we can do to build strength here, but there's a certain strength that only mileage will give you. Now, on top of that, there's another way of building fantastic strength, and that is hill work. And I'm not talking about smashing myself in hill reps. I'm not talking about doing Kenyan hill sessions. I'm not talking about that sort of thing. I'm talking about simply incorporating plenty of hill work into those easy runs. Now, that may mean that to keep the effort easy to begin with, I'm actually doing a little bit of walking. And that's fine, because my body doesn't recognize pace. Your body recognizes effort. Okay, so that's, it doesn't matter if I'm gonna be doing a little bit of walking on the uphills to keep my heart rate where it needs to be, because over time, those walk sections will turn into slow run sections and will turn into run sections that feel stronger and stronger. And if you've been to Norfolk, where I'm from, you'll know that it is flat as a pancake. Um, I guess for those of you in the States, kind of think perhaps Florida, maybe, as an, as a, as, as a it's, well, that's the only way that Norfolk's like Florida, by the way. But yeah, absolutely flat. We, just over the sea from us is the Netherlands. Again, very flat, very similar landscape in many, many kind of ways. So finding hills to train on, it's going to be a little bit challenging, but definitely also very repetitive because I've got a few hills in mind and I'm just going to be working them again and again and again. But in reality, I also am probably going to need to get in the car when we're allowed to go a little bit further afield and find some hills to go and work myself hard on. So let's talk about the next part of this whole challenge, and that is weight loss. I started this challenge at 119 kilos. In fact, 118 today. I weighed in today, lost one kilogram. Fantastic, 2.2 pounds. But of course, there's still a long way to go before I get to the 100 kilo mark that I intend to do this three hour marathon at. Now, of course, I know, like I said, how this looks. I don't look like a guy who's perhaps, you know, really obese, you know, really heavy, getting into running because the doctor said you really must, although the irony is the doctor has told me I need to lose a bit of the timber and get fit. Um, I am six foot six, so I do carry this weight perhaps a little bit better than someone who would be, let's say, five foot eight and the same weight. Okay, but I still need to start shifting a little bit of this weight because I tell you now, at 118 kilograms, there's no chance I'm going to get close to my parent marathon PB, let alone three hours. So it's, um, it's something I need to work on. And also it will benefit my general health. So I told you in the last video about the issues with blood pressure. I alluded towards the issues with blood sugar that, uh, that seems to be creeping up. These things will all benefit from me losing a little bit of weight. And the way I'm going to go about starting to do that is to get more specific about understanding what I'm putting in my body. I'm starting to track calories again, and I'm using my fitness pal to do that. It's not just calories, obviously I'm tracking macros as well, so understanding the carbohydrates, the proteins, the fats that I'm putting in my body, the, the nutrients that come with the food that I'm eating. I'm also looking into various tests to understand what I may be deficient in. You know, while we're going down this route, why not understand as much as possible? But for me, the start here is using the MyFitnessPal app, is, lo is logging what I'm eating, and starting to get a handle on where I'm sneaking in, the, or where I have been sneaking in those extra calories, where I've been going over the, over the top with portion sizes and I can start to reel that in a little bit and eat really what I need rather than simply just binging on snacks and overdoing it with portion sizes with main meals. So it all starts with that. I then 
will start thinking about the, the calories I need for my training alongside the calories that I need on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's the beginning of a process. I know in the past, various different kind of um, calorie goals I've used for various different outcomes in the past, but of course they will have to be tweaked for different amounts of training I'm doing. So when I'm not doing huge volume, I know that around about 2,400 calories is a good place for me to be to start to lose a little bit of weight. But as I start doing more and more volume, of course, I'm going to need to start bumping that up. And those extra calories are going to need to come from the right foods. I'd love to know, in fact, if any of you use MyFitnessPal or anything similar to that to track your nutrition. Let me know down in the comments. So I've told you about the first 20 week block of improving my aerobic fitness I'm gonna be doing. And of course, while I'm doing that, I'm working on my nutrition. The nutrition is going to be an ongoing theme. Beyond that, I'm then going to be working on a specific block of 16 weeks where I'm working on my improving my 5K time. Okay, I'm specifically at that point going to start to build a bit of speed into the program because I know that coming off the back of that aerobic training block, that low heart rate training block, my endurance is going to be so much better, but I'm going to start to need to start training a little bit more speed into the legs, start training my body to run better at higher intensities and be able to tolerate running at higher intensities, push my lactate threshold onwards, because obviously I need to take a look at what I'm going to be doing in the spring. So that's going to be then 16 weeks worth of 5k training to lead me in to just after Christmas, so the beginning of 2022, the beginning of a marathon training block for a 2022 spring marathon. That's going to be the first marathon of probably what will turn into four marathons that I'm going to use to get to that final three hour goal or 2.59.59 goal that I'm really shooting for. So for this, again, we'll talk about goals in terms of goal times, et cetera, later on in this video, but it's gonna go initial aerobic training block, 5K training block. Now in that 5K training block, we'll talk about that another day, but specifically the thing that I want you to appreciate is knowing that I've got marathon training block off the back of that, I'm going to keep those long runs still around about the kind of the 14 mile mark on a weekly basis. Not every week is gonna be 14 miles, I'm probably gonna cycle 12, 14, 16, eight, 12, 14, 16, eight, something like that, but it will keep a decent bit of long run fitness in the legs so that I can hit that marathon training block ready to go, and the goal for that marathon training block, ideally, I'd like to get to a point, okay, I meant to talk about this later in this video, but ideally a point where I'm running at about 3.10. If I can hit 3.10 in the spring of 2022, I will be over the moon. Knowing that there was not a huge amount of training that went into that marathon PB of 3.26, and that I'm now going to be doing a good 20 weeks of aerobic training, then specific 5k speed training with a long with long runs thrown in as well, then marathon training. I think that 310 is going to be very, very doable. Of course, alongside all of that, there's going to be strength conditioning work going on. We'll talk about that another day as well. I don't want to overload you with this video, but that hopefully gives you a decent kind of overview as to what the next pretty much, well, pretty much year is going to look like with my training. I'm super excited. And the best thing for me is that I'm in no rush to hit this ultimate goal. I've got until I'm 40 to run this sub three marathon. And I'm, like I said, 37 now. I've got till autumn 20, so November 2023 to get it done. And it's the first time I've given myself a long period of time to achieve a goal. A lot of the time previously, it's been this in a month this in six weeks, this in three months. This feels way more like a long-term change, a lifestyle change in service of a bigger goal. And I really, really, really can't wait to get moving with it. Now, one of the big things that really excites me about this new series of videos is the opportunity to take you guys along on the ride with me. Now, that could be in future, things like doing meetups and doing runs together, or in this case, making sure that I'm pulling comments out and starting to answer questions specifically in the videos. And Ian had a question from last video. Ian says that the end goal is great. Are you setting any mini goals along the way? And yes, yes, I am. Now, I'm not going to be talking about all the different mini goals from here through to the end of 2023. And obviously that to ideal 259.59 big goal. I'm going to talk about the mini goals around this first three phases that we were talking about. So for me, 
it is all about two types of goal. One is process driven and one is outcome driven. The first process driven goal is in this first block. And really, it's all about consistency and getting to a point where I'm running a consistent week after week after week of six to eight hours per week in that aerobic training zone. So hitting around about that 135 beats per minute, staying just under there. If I can get that week after week after week consistently, I know that I'm going to see the benefits. So that is the first goal. The second goal in this 5K training block just before Christmas this year is me going sub 20 minutes. If I can drop sub 20 minutes for 5K, that's going to be me moving in the right direction to start to build the speed in my legs that I know I'm going to need. I'm going to need more speed than that, I appreciate, but the speed in my legs I'm going to need for the big goal further down the way. It's certainly going to be a heck of a lot faster than I can do 5K right now. It's actually a long time since I've done a, a timed 5K. But that's the goal by the end of the year. And then in the spring, like I said earlier, it's that 310 marathon. If I could just dip under 310, I will be absolutely ecstatic. So I know along that process, the weight's going to fall off. I'm not setting weight goals along the way. I know that I will hit that 100 kilos probably by the end of this year. But I know that I can't just stand here today unfit and overweight and say I want, want to run sub three by the time I'm 40 without understanding that I need to get a heck of a lot better in terms of my endurance to begin with. I need to get faster. I can't expect to get to the pace that I need to get to simply by the end of this year. That's unrealistic. But sub 25k, I think that's doable. If you're on Strava, by all means, come and find me on there. I'd love to connect, talk more about training. And next week, I'll be here specifically to talk about the modifications that I make to the Maffetone training method to help me improve my endurance whilst also maintaining, well, to be honest, building a bit of speed at the same time. So don't miss that one. And I'll see you in the next video.